Hello everyone and welcome to how to think about organizational structure and organizational charts. Today we're going to talk about future thinking. We're going to address the way we will think in the future and communicate in the future around organizational design, organizational structure, and how we're going to capture this new thinking in our organizational chart of the future. Hint, they're not going to be called org charts. I am Walt Brown, the author of the book, Death of the Org Chart, Rise of the Organizational Graph. And yes, if you look closely, there are tombstones on the cover of the book with little org chart drawings on each of the stones. Organizational structures, organizational charts, and organizational graphs. What they have to do with the future. This is exciting stuff that I'm happy to share. Let's set some context. Now I ask you, don't freak out. Please remain calm. This is normal human stuff. And as humans, what makes us unique is we organize. We have always organized around ideas. We have always organized around things that need to get done. This is what makes us unique and what we're great at doing. Think about words and language. They're all about getting organized. Our current problem is we have no way to clearly capture, visualize, and communicate the ways we are currently organized. The tools, methods, and approaches have become old, dated, and cloudy. It has become cloudy. So let's dig in some. Dig into some more human stuff, more understanding around why our thinking around organizational structure design and capture is currently cloudy. As humans, in the past, we were organized, and we would organize as tribes. And as tribes, we would have elders and leaders, the final decision makers. Nowadays, this decision making is less centralized, more automated, more dispersed, less black and white. And we need a way to really understand and capture how we are organized inside as a modern tribe. And key point, it should not always start with the centerpiece as the leader, i.e. who we report to, who our boss is. Okay, it's time to put your nerd hat on for a few minutes. I want to introduce you to something. It is the way we're going to capture and communicate the organizational chart of the future, and frankly, our modern day organization. It's called a graph. And it's time to get your head around this term because you're going to hear it more and more as people start to use the word graph. Oh, that's a graph, is what you'll hear them say. Meaning information communicated through a graph database. Still nerd talk. A little discovery story about the future of organizational charts. What you see here on the yellow piece of paper is what I drew for Elias Hicks at a Starbucks back in 2017. I was describing to, to him the deep organizational structure consulting work I was doing inside some really big organizations and all of the different attributes that surrounded an individual contributor at work. I drew this drawing for him. You could almost call it a napkin drawing says all good ideas start on a napkin. He looks at it and he says, oh, that's a graph. Elias is a data wonk out of Princeton. He really knows his stuff. And I say, really? What's a graph? So what is a graph? Probably your best frame of reference is to think about Facebook and all the connections that they manage. In 2014, Facebook migrated from what I might refer to or oversimplify and call a relational database, and they migrated to a graph database format. Huge oversimplification. I just want you to see that this is coming. Graphs are running underneath many systems we already interact with, and we don't even know it. So why can't we leverage this graph technology? to capture organizational structures and to be able to visualize organizational charts as a graph. Can the future of organizational structures and charts be based on a graph database structure? My thesis is that graphs are the only way forward. 
the only way to capture and communicate the growing complexity of modern organizational structures. Organizational structures, organizational charts in the future will be known as organizational graphs. We will say, have you graphed your organization structure? Can I see your organizational graph? So what is a graph? A graph is a form of database that's made up of two basic things. A graph has objects, and I'll describe some organizational structure objects for you in just a second. And a graph, and a graph has connections. And this is really the important difference. In essence, a connection describes a relationship between two objects. They are descriptive words. In a graph database, the connections carry as much priority and weight and importance as the objects in the database. I will describe some organizational structure connection examples in a minute. Objects. Let me give you some quick examples of graph objects that we can think about in an organizational structure that we would love to capture in an organizational chart. Examples. A job, a person, a team, a meeting, a system, a customer, a process, a workflow, a skill, etc., etc. All of these are examples of objects that are part of how we are organized at work. We will use these objects in our graph database to help capture our organizational structure and our organizational planning and thinking. Connections. Here are some examples of connections. Remember, connections live between objects and give the relationship between the objects meaning. We will use words or terms like reports to, attends, member of, follows, mentored by, coached by, interacts with, interfaces with. These are the types of example words that will be used as connections in an organizational graph to communicate more deeply how we're structured organizationally. Let's run through some easy to understand connection examples using some images. What you're going to see in each example is a blue line with an arrow tip. And above the blue line with an arrow tip is the connection phrase. And then there's going to be an icon at the end of the arrow pointing to an object describing the relationship an object has to another object. To keep it simple, I left out the from object and only include the target object. I hope you enjoy it. Connection. Reports to. We can start with the old familiar reports to and this is basically what we're capturing in a classic hierarchical organizational chart with the lines. The connection is reports to. Connection attends. We have meetings and we attend meetings. Pretty simple. Connection member of. We are members of a team. Connection follows. We follow processes. We have a bunch of processes. Who's following them? Interfaces with. We interface with systems. Think about all the systems that we log into every day. If we have this mapped, we know who is logging in and interfacing with what systems. If we understand who's inputting data, who's extracting data, who's moving things through a workflow, we might be more organized. Systems are part of our everyday life, part of our organization. We need to understand who is interfacing with them and why. Now remember earlier, I asked you to not freak out, to remain calm. Don't try to think about how you will capture all this stuff. Just relax and understand and acknowledge that this is the reality and we need to be able to capture it and see it. Two deep breaths. Breathe in. Breathe out. In. And then out. Relax and absorb. Accountable for. Connection. Accountable for. We have goals and objectives. OKRs that we are accountable for hitting. Objectives are already in our structure. They have a lot of impact on the way we're organized. We know we have these objectives. Now let's just get them out in the open. Let's connect them so we can understand who's accountable for them. Accountable for. Connection responsible for. In order to achieve our objectives, 
We are responsible for creating short-term results. Who's responsible for these results that line up to us achieving our objectives? We have a connection to call responsible for. Connection, function of. I'm trying to make it simple, bring it back to the ground for you. We have roles and positions that are a function of our job. We play and fill many different roles and positions during a day. How do we know they are part of our job? A function of our job. So we have the connection, function of. Coached by. When we have questions about the roles we are playing, the positions we are trying to fill, who do we turn to to be coached? Is it mapped? Is it clear? Is it natural? Does it make sense? Or does it not exist and we're just hanging around until we find a volunteer who's willing to help? Coached by is a needed connection in every modern day organizational structure. Again, breathe and don't freak out. Mentored by. Last example. Mentored by. This might seem a little granular, but very often the individual we report to is not necessarily the individual we feel we are mentored by. Does our organization need to define and map its mentors? Now that we've laid down some connection examples, let's run through some easy to understand organizational structure object examples. This will be easy, trust me. In the following, what you're going to see is an image of an icon that represents the object and below the icon is the name of the object. Let's begin with a hard one. Object, person. Duh, it, it, it wouldn't be an organization without people, right? As a matter of fact, I have a core belief and this belief is that an organization is a fiction. An organization is a fiction that's only given meaning and power by those individuals, those persons who buy in. So we have to have a person. Object, job. Object, job. Well, duh, we have to have jobs in our organizational structure. Let's not reinvent the wheel. And speaking of reinventing the wheel, I hope what you are seeing is that we are not trying to twist the way we naturally organize. We're not trying to come up with some new fancy ivory tower method or terminology. What we're trying to do is simplify and just extract the exact objects that exist in reality and link them with descriptive connection words. Object, position, or roles. Jobs have positions and roles that are a function of the job, and we need to be able to link and see how these positions and roles tie together in our, inside our organization structure. That's the reality. Skill. Skills. Everyone has skills. Organizations are made up of people with skills, and jobs and positions and roles require skills, object skills, meetings, object meetings. In most organizations, people are attending meetings. Can't make that go away, sorry. Object team. Nowadays, we have all this ranting and raving around teams. But haven't we always been organized around teams? What is a tribe if it's not a team? So of course we have teams. Object customer. We interact with customers. We interact with clients. We interact with contracts. We interact with projects. Each organization is going to be different with regards to the entities we interact with, and we need to identify each as an object to gain organizational clarity. I'm using a customer entity to fill this spot. I know this sounds like a lot of stuff, but it's the reality, right? And why more than ever, we need to be able to discuss it with a common language and capture it. Process, object process. Without process, there's no consistency, no peace of mind, no profit. If everybody wakes up every day doing things their own way, reinventing the wheel, there's no scalability. We have processes and we need to be able to say, to see, what they are, when they come to bear, and who is following and maintaining them. Object process. Object system. 
system. I know it went off on systems earlier, but think of systems as things we log into. Systems processes and workflows run in parallel, and we need to identify the systems that are logged into and who is logging into and who is logging into them and why. Object system. Object workflow. I know deep, deep detail. But workflow is still going on. The river of work that is running deep down below, it's still there. It's just become hidden beneath all of the software that has been stacked on top of it in a rush to automate and systemize. Click the button where it goes, nobody knows. Click the button where it goes, nobody knows. Object workflow and how we're connected to it. Objectives. There's one more to go after this one. Objectives. OKRs, objectives and key results, are all the way rage. All the rage. And we need to attach them to our organizational structure and organizational chart so we can see who is accountable for contributing and making them happen. Last one, result. It's very similar, but not exactly the same as objectives. In the world of OKRs, key results are the controllable things that need to manifest that people are responsible for doing. We need to attach them to our organizational structure and organizational chart so we can see who is responsible for contributing to and making them happen. Last object, result. Now the juicy stuff, the fun part. Since we understand that what we are looking at is a graph, I can give you some examples. Let's run through some easy to understand object slash connection examples and see how it all maps out. Let's start with something that's familiar, a job. Beside our job object, we add a person object and we use the connection owns and we see that this person owns this job. We add a skill object with the connection has and we see that this person has this skill. We add a position or role object and we connect it to the job where these positions or roles are a function of this job. We add the meeting object and connect it to the job showing that this job attends these meetings. We add a team object, connect it to a job showing that this job is a member of this team. We add a customer object connected to the job and we see that this job interacts with this customer. We add a process object and connect it to a job and we see that this job follows this process. We add a system object connected to a job and we see that this job interfaces with this system. We add a workflow object connected to a job and we see that this job participates in this workflow. We add an objective object, we connect it to a job and we see that this job is accountable for this objective. We added a result object, we connect it to the job and we see that the job is responsible for this result. A lot of depth and clarity there. Imagine if you were an individual contributor starting work at a new company and you had all these answers. And of course, we go back to the old world of organizational charts where we have bosses. We add an object labeled boss and connect our job to this boss and we see that our job reports to the boss object. And continuing down the same line of a classic organizational chart, our boss has a boss that they report to. And one last step, extending the organizational chart metaphor, our boss has their boss, who has their big boss that they report to all mapped out and all visualized. Kind of ending with a little levity there for you. Summary, graphs have objects and connections. The future of us really understanding the organizations we're part of is going to be in graphs. Questions and answers. You can reach me, uh, Walt, just 
email me walt at 7q7p.com that is my firm uh, we also talk about organizational cognizance at https ocog.io the software that captures all this stuff is ograph.io you can also find more about it in the book of our uh, death of the org chart just death of the org chart is the url the number one question most people ask is, wow, this sounds like a whole lot of stuff. How are we going to get this work done? And the answer really lies in it's done by the individual contributor. When we're working with an organization, we almost always start with the senior leadership team or the C-suite. We get all those folks in the, in the room and figure out all the roles and positions that they are all playing, start at the center. Once you get an inventory of the roles and positions, we assign the roles and positions to people, and then basically they paint by numbers to fill in the rest of the objects and connections. And then we jump all the way out to the outer ring, to the front lines, and we gather people together, and together we determine what are the different positions and roles that are a function of their jobs. We map these out and then we assign them to the people who already have them and own them and they're the best ones to really understand what's happening and they can quickly fill in the graph they understand all the objects they're dealing with they understand how all the connections work and they flesh the workout happy to answer all and any questions cheers <laughs>